Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. Before I go any further, I would like to say to all of you viewers out there that if you have any questions about mural art, please feel free to either leave them in the comment section or on the Facebook page or Facebook group. I will admit that I have not gotten to the point where I am unable to answer everyone yet. You will know when it gets to that point. In any case, in the course of answering your question, I might decide to turn it into a video, like what happened to this video. The idea for this video sparked from a suggestion from one of my viewers from one of the videos. Here is a verbatim of what transpired. This viewer commented, I have a suggestion that you talk about colors also, just as you did with shapes here. Like when is blue used, or purple, or what does green symbolize? Or maybe what does it mean when you use warm colors, or maybe colors opposite on the color wheel? I believe this would be a very interesting discussion and would be helpful to others. Thank you for this video. I needed it and enjoyed it. When I replied to this message, I had no intention of making a video about all the color theories I know of and definitely did not go into as much details as I will be going into here. But a couple of days on, I thought to myself, why not? I thought I could let the viewers know what I know and let them decide for themselves what they want to do. Bear in mind that Neurographica has its own set of color theory and if you have taken the course from one of the instructors which is not needed to work with others. And I think the inventor of Neurographica knows that too, which is the reason why it was not included into the specialist certification. The problem with taking specific color theory courses is that there is a tendency for it to become dogma. And that is missed opportunity to invite clients to have their own meaning on the colors he or she used. My philosophy on color is your work, your colors, and therefore your meaning. And colors will become the additional layer of meaning that the client or clients will bring. As I started my research to gather more information for the video, I started realizing that there is going to be too much information to be put into a single video, and decided to split it up into two parts. In this part of the video, you will get a brief introduction into some of the color theories that I know of. There are many different schools of color theories, and covering all of them in brief will be too monumental of a task to be even covered in a few videos. Hence, I just selected a few that I thought would be interesting and left the rest to you viewers to discover on your own. Colors are a big part of our lives. It is undeniably that different colors do have certain effects on all of us. For example, like having red colors apparent on a plate of food will make it appear more palatable, delicious, and appetizing. You bet there will be research in how colors can affect our everyday life. Please note though that throughout this video, I'm going to be very brief and general because there is a lot to cover and I do not want to bore you with all the details about each of the subjects. But to give you enough information to know the gist of it. If you are interested to find out more details about each of the topics discussed here, the Google search engine is your best friend. The first topic I will be covering is the psychology of colors. We have some measurable response to different colors according to researchers. 
For example, warm colors can evoke the feelings of warm, comfort, anger, and hostility. While cool colors evoke the feelings of calm, sadness, or indifference. Colors can be used for therapeutic purposes. Hence, the existence of color therapy, chromotherapy, and auric energy healing. Colors has also been used as a form of alternative or holistic treatment. Some examples of these are the use of color red to stimulate the body and the mind to increase circulation, and indigo shades are thought to help with alleviating skin problems, as well as the use of red light to promote healing and reduce acne scarring. Research has also shown some observable effects of colors, like the mood-altering properties of colors are at best temporary and dissipates after a short while. Other surprising effects that has been observed through several scientific research includes, but not limited to, for example, red has the effect of causing people to react with greater speed and force. In team sports, the team wearing black is more likely to receive penalties. In medicine, warm colored placebo pills were reported to be more effective than cool colored placebo pills. Perhaps this is an indication that if we were ever taking any medication, a warm colored pill would be more effective. Of course, this is just an implied observation on my part. I do not have any research to back this up. Exposing a student to red color before an exam has the effect of lowering his or her score by as much as 20% lower than their counterpart who have been exposed to the color green. An important thing to note here is that all research studies are based on statistical significance, meaning that there is a small percentage that does not conform to these findings. But because it is such a small percentage, like 5% usually, sometimes less, sometimes more, but usually in the single digits, and it can vary with each research. Therefore, it is deemed as insignificant in favor of the study effects. The effects of colors has also been seen on consumers to affect their behaviors. Like for example, white suggests fresh and clean and also evokes the sense of youth and modernity. And silver in gadgets are linked to being innovative, new, modern, and cutting edge. Lastly, people who drive grey cars prefer not to stand out and like to be subtle. Next, we have the Feng Shui color theory, where colors are associated with elements. The study of Feng Shui is all about bringing harmony to the elements that are present. The elements here refer to wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Each of these elements have colors associated with them. In some cases, different hues of the same color are associated with two different elements. Two examples I can think of are red and yellow. Red in general is associated with the element of fire, but when it is dull red, like maroon, it becomes associated with the element of earth. In the case of yellow, it is generally associated with earth, but a bright yellow will become associated with the element of fire. 
The feng shui school of color theory is a very huge topic and it is not something that can be covered in the span of a few hours. I do have a series of feng shui related tutorial videos outlining some of the information. The rest will require your personal self-study. Bear in mind that there are many different schools of feng shui. Each school has its own version of practice and it becomes very important to take note which school of feng shui the information you are reading about pertains to because practicing mixed school feng shui can potentially have undesirable effects. Therefore, it is best to stick with one school and not mix them up. Having said that, in my opinion, the compass school feng shui is the easiest and most simple to follow. And facing feng shui is the most complicated as it requires formulaic calculations that changes from year to year depending on the elemental year. And next we have the standard color theory in art where everyone should have at least an idea of what it is. Again, this can be a very big topic depending on how deeply you want to go into. The gist of this theory is that it tells you that there are three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Every other color is some combination of these three colors except white and black. Although it can be argued that black can be synthesized from some combinations of the three colors, but it will never be the true black you get from charcoal. It also talks about different color combinations and its effect. Color combinations like the analogous, complementary, monochromatic, etc. And the effects being referred to are how the different color combinations can give the viewer different feelings about your art. Some of the effects were talked about when I was talking about the psychology of colors. However, the theory here is more focused on the viewer's perception instead of the actual measurable effects. Being able to apply this theory well will make your artwork evoke certain feelings in your viewers and therefore makes it more exciting rather than dull. Of course, if making it dull was the aim of your artwork to begin with, it can be exciting too. Viewers will be excited to see how you made it look dull. Yes, the paradox. That's why it's art. Next, we have these seven chakra colors. In the spiritual circles, especially those who practice yoga, or those who study holistic healings of Ayurvedic and also not limited to those who study the New Age philosophy, you will be intimately familiar with the seven chakra system in the human body. It is said that there are seven chakras or seven centers of energy associated with the human body. It will be useful to take note that there are actually more than seven, but these seven that I'm referring to are the main ones. It is believed that as much as our whole body is supplied nutrient by a vast network of blood vessels, the body is also supplied energy via a vast network of meridians that connect to energy centers located throughout the body. These aforementioned seven chakras are the seven main ones that distribute energy to the other smaller energy centers. Each of these chakras has an associated area along the spinal column that also has an associated color and frequency attached to it. This is the reason there are such things known as sound therapy, color therapy, and energy healing. 
each of the chakras also has a purported role to play for the overall well-being of the life that is associated with that body. For example, the root chakra that is located at the base of the spine is associated with the color red and the energy of survival and hence has the role of manifestation into physical. While the crown chakra is associated with the color of violet and is known as the seat of enlightenment, wisdom, and connection to the greater cosmos, therefore also has the role of attraction from the cosmos. I do not want to make this video too long, so I am just going to stop here about the seven chakras and colors. If you want to find out more, like I said at the beginning of the video, Google is your best friend. And you will be able to spend as much time as you want studying or reading about all of it. Just to be mindful that this topic can be another deep rabbit hole to dive into. And with that, we have come to the end of this part of the video.